So I've decided to be more positional when I'm trying to make videos in season. So let's talk about running backs in 2023 and who's interesting from a dynasty perspective and in what way. So from a dynasty perspective, there are a couple of running backs who are really interested just broadly in general in dynasty. Now, Devin A. Chain and Bajon Robinson are clearly the two most impressive so far rookie running backs. Now, Bajon Robinson continues to be the running back that I won Dynasty most of all, but there's been nothing through the first three weeks of 2023 to make me think anyone else is being fooled into thinking that's not true. While Jameer Gibbs is doing pretty well, Bajon Robinson remains the top of the rookie ranks and also of the running back ranks in general in Dynasty, so I just want to throw that name out there ju just, just in case. You should always try and add Bajon Robinson right now. Jermaine Gibbs is fine and he's pretty good, but uh, yeah, Bajon Robinson is it. I also want to call the play that I should have thought about before last week and Devin Chain went off for 60 points. We remain loyal to our rookie ranks, especially through the first four weeks. Now, running back ranks get a lot more solidified a lot earlier and can be a lot more trusted through the first three weeks of the season. We're already above 50% of the top 12 being more than likely to finish inside the top 12 if they're ranking there right now, even if they've only played one or two games out of three. Having said that, Tank Bigsby is someone that showed up in our rookie process and I ranked fairly highly versus consensus. There are some other running ranks that I really liked in that second tier, but Roshan Johnson, for example, has already garnered a lot of hype and so I don't think he's really on this list. So I wanna highlight Tank Bigsby as well over the course of the season. So we should just keep that in mind while trying to add things to trades that we're sending in our Dynasty League. Outside of that, I think Brees Hall is someone who made my article this week and I really want to highlight. He's coming back off his off-season recovery program and this week, or rather last week in week three, he saw his season high rushing attempts, 51%, and also saw his season high snap share in that backfield. Now the result wasn't everything week one was on much less opportunity. We know what he can do with less opportunity and his opportunity is slowly growing. He's one of the few running backs in Dynasty who's just a good player to try to add no matter what situation your team's in. Even if it's just for value, I think Brees Hall is more likely to grow in that direction. We actually talked about him a lot on the Dynasty grind last night for that specific reason. So Bajon Robinson, just, just in case you weren't aware, the Tank Bigsby or the Tank Bigsby of the world, if there was someone else for the rookie process that you particularly liked, and also Brees Hall make that list for me, kind of evergreen dynasty buy list. Outside of that, a few players actually stick out. Now, when buying running backs in dynasty, broadly my rule is only this year manners, and so you should only be looking at running backs if you are highly competitive or trying to become more highly competitive. And so looking at the rankings and the overall team makeups, there are actually three players who really stand out to me right now that I would go try and add in that situation in dynasty. If I just skip over to my uh, advanced tab, the rankings are shown here for pretty much all the advanced stats that I'm doing. And Tony Pollard is already ranked inside the top 12 for weighted opportunity. And again, for running backs, those ranks can be trusted more consistently from here on out. We're already above 50%. But no one's surprised. Tony Pollard was ranked inside the top 12 in Dynasty before the season began. His touchdown should bounce back, especially in the red zone. He's scoring significantly fewer touchdowns in the red zone than you would expect on that volume. And in fact, that's true for the offense entirely. And Dallas is probably going to bounce back in a big way in terms of touchdowns over the next few weeks. But there are three players ranking in the top 12 for overall opportunity when it's weighted for their target share, getting an extra boost, and their red zone attempts that are currently not in the top 12 that might be part of that other that other 48% of running backs who are going to emerge as top 12 running backs by the end of the season. DeAndre Swift, while last week was another really good week in fantasy, and so his whoever's rostering him isn't going to want to get rid of him for nothing, especially since he's relatively young to the position, I think he might be slightly underrated in terms of his overall performance for the rest of the season. He's currently only got 322 yards per touchdown. The average exists between 100 and 200. So again, he's a player looking to score more touchdowns moving forward. He's also got a significant red zone presence and has slightly underperformed in the red zone so far as well, only through three weeks, but he's only ranking inside the top 15 and I really think he could finish inside the top 12 by the end of the season. Alexander Madison, while he had a down week and everyone gave up on him and whatever you think of his actual on-field performance, his volume is solid, again ranking inside the top 12. He's actually a top 7 running back in terms of weighted opportunity when you give targets a little extra boost and take into account their red zone presence. 
Currently, he's only scoring a touchdown every 208 yards, and again, that should gun down a little bit. Minnesota is also a team overperforming in the receiving game across the board, and that makes sense. When you have Kirk Cousins, who's fine, or at least capable, throwing to Jordan Anderson and Justin Jefferson, occasionally the receiving game is going to be too efficient. But that could mean more rushing attempts moving forward, especially in the red zone, and Madison has a strong stranglehold on that type of role in Minnesota. So moving forward, we could easily see more games like last week out of Madison. And he's an interesting dynasty candidate because he's not holding much longer term value. And if you're interested in this year running backs, Madison might be a guy to try and go out and get. The third and final one, and I think this is this guy's going to make most lists because he has made most lists in dynasty for these specific reasons through the last three years. Josh Jacobs is younger than you think, he always has more volume, and he's finished inside the top 12 more often than you would imagine, both overall and on a weekly basis. He's currently ranked inside the top 25 for fantasy points, and points per game he's a top 36 running back, but his weighted opportunity is top 12. He hasn't scored a touchdown yet, at least broadly. In the 2023 season, its red zone opportunity is decent, and moving forward, the matchup should ease up a little bit, and so Josh Jacobs could well get back to a top 12 ways, or at least have some more top 12 weeks. He should certainly be better than the number 32 running back overall in points per game moving forward. Vegas has had uh, a lot of touchdown heavy wide receivers. Jacoby Myers has found his touchdown swag in Las Vegas. Um, and while he's going blow for blow with Devontae Adams in terms of overall opportunity, he's actually scoring a few too many touchdowns per yard at this point, And that could swing back towards the running game and go in Josh Jacobs' favor. So, depending on what situation you're in in Dynasty, there are different running backs that I would be interested in more broadly. And several that I'd be interested in no matter what, like Brees Hall, like Tank Bigsby, or whatever your favorite rookie is who hasn't yet quite done anything. Um, and then there are some running backs that are specifically I'd be looking at for teams that are more competitive or looking to get more competitive um, based on their overall opportunity and their so far current points per game records. I, I do think they're going to get back into the top 12 or at least have top 12 weeks coming and they might be more easy to attain in your dynasty leagues than most who have that level of opportunity. So check them out or don't. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Uh, hopefully, maybe I'll fit in some other positions before this week begins and we get into next week's content cycle. But I wanted to highlight the running backs because that's one of the most consistent questions I get in the Discord. And for teams going into week four who are starting to believe they're competitive, running back can be a really interesting position to break down. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit. If not, let me know. Let me know what else I should focus uh, these videos on. And uh, outside of that, I'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Hey, thanks for checking out another video. If you could like, subscribe, comment, that'd all be great. But also check out the rest of the channels. I follow my Patreon link to see what I'm up to over there. And the link tree link, I guess, is going to take you uh, to easy access to my podcast, the articles I'm writing over there at DLF, as well as it, most of the other things I'm up to. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks very much.